Hey Sam, how are you? It's really nice to uh, have you as part of the school. I'm really looking forward to you uh, enjoying your journey as a recovery coach. Uh, I understand you're in recovery and uh, I know Melinda uh, very well. I've sponsored her for many years. Um, and uh, I've been in recovery uh, for 22 years. Uh, I've had a bumpy journey. And what I've really learned is that uh, recovery at its core is a diversity issue where people think and behave differently and uh, they're discriminated against and uh, the marginalized uh, communities and addiction is really born in a uh, guilt and shame and it's a stigmatized illness uh, and I don't really want to kind of preach to the converted I know that you understand that but uh, what I'm more interested in is how coaching can change workplace culture and that uh, the workplace environment is uh, really in need of uh, changing and um, particularly in the South African context. So to kind of give you some perspective, I, I came uh, up to Johannesburg in 97 and uh, I started working in corporate South Africa. And when I was working at uh, JP Morgan, uh, I noticed out of my, my the, the team that I was working in, there were 12 people in that team. And uh, I was the guy that was in recovery. And uh, because I was the guy that was in recovery, people used to talk to me about their problems. And nine out of the 12 people had uh, a problem with uh, addiction or alcoholism in the home environment. So it was either... Uh, some direct family member or some indirect family member and uh, I also became aware of how uh, the workplace culture behaved a lot like a dysfunctional family and um, so in my work over the years just watching the how, how teams come together and how people work together we could be doing so much more and whenever it comes to trying to get people to address these things and to change there's always some sort of resistance so my frustration this morning is I'm really tired of having to jump through all the hoops before uh, we can change something so people always say oh yes David that's a good idea but or yes this is fantastic but or and I'm, and I'm just tired of the but and it just seems to be getting uh, worse and worse and uh, kind of deteriorating so I'm really frustrated and that's what my my message this morning was about is like um, is uh, kind of how frustrated I get and as a, a leader of uh, this trust and this school and uh, the rehab uh, what we can do differently and uh, how we can work together so I'm tired of you know, working with uh, government that just don't do anything or working with business that don't do anything and uh, how you can really help me is uh, or help us you know, is to uh, network and to kind of talk about what we're trying to do at the, the trust and the school. Um, so the trust is, it's a Section 18A trust, it's a non-profit, it uh, receives a, a, a Section 18A status, which means corporate South Africa can make tax-deductible donations to the trust. So if you had to pay 100,000 Rand in tax a year, you could take 10,000 Rand of that and put that into the trust and then hand that over to the, the SARS as part of your tax bill. And uh, really what I want to do is to be able to train a thousand coaches at a thousand dollars each and the skill of uh, the recovery coach can go into the workplace environment and start to shift change within organizations and the way that we do things. So uh, addiction, as you know, is a very controversial issue and the skill set of the coaches that are available to or um, are trained to work in conflict environments in crisis, chaos and conflict, they can very easily go into organizations and talk about things like uh, gender issues or racism or rank power and privilege or uh, internal oppression or victim consciousness. Um, and, uh, and that's really what I'm kind of passionate about and the, the message that I want to get across. Um, and the challenge with organizations, to give you an example, I'll, I'll work with a, 
uh, female executive in an organization who will talk about kind of gender based um, frustration and uh, discrimination and when uh, we we coach we empower that person to 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 raise their voice the system doesn't like it and then the system shuts down so in the, the <coughs> alcoholic family just to give you some context we might sober up a, a father in the family and uh, he sobers up and then he, he starts to take responsibility for his finances again and uh, inadvertently he upsets the, the wife and the kids because all of a sudden he's not waking up in a place of guilt and shame anymore. He's waking up and he's kind of thinking like, hang on a second, I need to sort out my, uh, my, um, my finances to take responsibility for it and as in doing that uh, it, it creates systemic change where the family members don't particularly like it so you can take this same concept into the workplace environment and let's start talking about uh, unconscious racism you start to raise the voice of uh, the marginalized to kind of say hang on a second this behavior isn't appropriate or it's angering me or it's pissing me off and people will surface level say uh, we want you to to be able to do that but when you do do that it creates tension within the system and uh, when the tension comes into the system, the system uh, continuously tries to reset itself back. So we can see see how this keeps repeating itself in this in 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 this country. So, and I've been doing this for a while, and I'm really kind of frustrated about. Uh, having to, to get the right piece of paper, to get the right, jump through the right hoop to get the, you know, the bureaucrats on board. And, uh, and um, I'm pleased to say that we've done that. I mean, we've done that with the training. The trust has three objectives, to train people, to empower uh, those people that they can go off and provide treatment within their communities, whatever that treatment looks like. Um, and really what I wanted to be able to do now is to train people, empower them and to educate uh, so that, that uh, we can create more coaches out there that can go off and uh, create coaching within their, their, their environments and uh, you know, true wellness, like mental health, mental wellness. Um, so that's what I'm, I'm, I've got to be in my bonnet about. And uh, how you could help me is to kind of guide me and to uh, help me reframe the message. And um, if that's not kind of, if I'm not crossing a boundary and being disrespectful or anything. But, uh, you know, I've got uh, four kids and uh, an adopted goddaughter. And, um, you know, I, I'm just tired of us, us the white straight men that are in power not doing anything and uh, we kind of get it in the neck a lot recently about you know, the white straight male and uh, and I think uh, the men in the, the, their hearts are scared and it's still not good enough it's not a it's not an excuse not to do anything we can't be victimized we need to kind of rise up and and to come up with solutions and uh, so that's what I, I keep trying to achieve I've done it by being polite I've done it by being funny <laughs> trying it by being angry and uh, I just uh, struggle at times to just keep motivated and keep going um, so yeah the but I mean, our work is fantastic. Yeah, you know, my work is fantastic. I mean, we've got a, we're doing fantastic work here in Johannesburg and Cape Town, uh, bloody just Cape Townians. But uh, we've got a school in Australia and we've got uh, starting a school in New Zealand and uh, start, we've just started a school in Middlesbrough in, in, in the UK and uh, coaching works within organizations and coaching works in improving treatment outcomes in the the addiction world or the recovery world so instead of just talking about the problem of addiction i'd much rather talk about the solution of recovery 
and when business is in, in, in crisis, I want to talk about how we can get business recovery and how we can use coaching for that. Um, and I do a lot of coaching in, in, in institutions, in, in banks and in the banking world mainly. And um, I hear these guys and uh, yeah. So sorry if I'm waffling. I'd love to meet you for a coffee sometime and just kind of have a chat. And uh, I'm glad you're going to be doing our training. And I really hope to get to meet you soon. I'm going to send this to your personal uh, group on Workplace. I mean, Workplace are a wonderful platform. Facebook have given it to us um, for free because we're an NGO. And uh, with technology, we can bring people together, like-minded people to collaborate and to really create systemic change using technology. And the reason I want to use Facebook uh, is a common platform that the youth use. So with our schools program, you know, when, once we've got uh, the, the, well, as, as, as the, the training all, all goes online and on, on the Facebook platform, they know how to use the, the software. So it's very easy to integrate into the school and use the learning environment. And as far as schools are concerned, we need to listen to the pupils and uh, the parents need to stop fighting with the teachers and the teachers need to work with the parents. And uh, yeah, so I can go on and on and on. Um, but uh, thank you for watching. I hope you do watch it. And uh, yeah, if you know anyone that wants to contribute to help us, our, my goal is or our goal is is to train a thousand coaches at a thousand dollars each so that's basically a million dollars that we can create a sustainable school which is an African solution to a global problem and uh, that would we would need that to kind of create a solid foundation that um, is going to be sustainable for the next 10 years and uh, you know, the, the, I've got all the, the research to, to back up uh, my thinking and um, I'd love to share that with you. So thanks for watching. Um, thank you for everything you, you have done. Um, one of the things that I do use in the, in the training is uh, where I talk about, I, I, heard, I heard you uh, on the radio one day where you spoke about uh, how much money do you need to be to be in the top 1% of earners. And it turned out to be 530,000 Rand a year, about 45,000 Rand a month. And that blew me away. And since I've received that information, it's really got me to kind of change my perspective on uh, how much money do I need and uh, how much do I have. And, you know, once you kind of hit that level, what, like, why would you want to make more? Now when to see so many other people suffering out there. So it really gave me perspective into to stop chasing money and to really focus on what it is that I want to do and what my kind of soul's purpose is and what my kokorozashi is. And um, yeah, so I'll talk more. Um, I hope you watch this till the end and uh, thank you very much for commenting. Uh, I really appreciate it. Okay, thank you. Bye-bye.